So today we're talking about commanding life from death, and it takes a touch of a master's hand to, to, to make that change. And the Lord wants us to remember that, uh, that he is strongly on our side. You know, there is a, in our day today, in what's going on today, there is this push to be shoved into a corner, to get into a closet, and to lock the door, and to hide in there, and it is, and they're trying to push harder and harder and harder, and I can tell you that's not the spirit of the Lord. The Lord is not the one trying to shove you in a corner. The Lord is not the one trying to get you in a closet. The Lord is not the one that's trying to get you to hide and to um, cower at any point in time. The Lord is trying to get us to take up our most holy faith and get about our Father's business. Amen? And we want Him to do that. So today we're going to be reading about the valley, uh, the vision of the valley of the dry bones. We're not going to cover the whole thing today uh, because it's just too much. Because there's a lot here. But let's go into this Ezekiel chapter 37 and starting in verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me. And he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley, and it was full of dry bones. Hear it again. The hand of the Lord was upon me. He brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, set me down in the middle of the dry bones, and it was full of bones. We could actually stop at verse 1 and talk about it. And we'll do that in a minute, but not yet. Let's go on just a little bit. And then he caused me to ba pass amongst the dry bones round about. And behold, there was very many on the surface of the valley. And lo, they were very dry. Say very dry. Very dry. Very dry. And he said to me, said a man, can these bones live? And I answered, oh, Lord God, you know. And he said to me, again he said to me, prophesy over these bones, say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter you that you may come to life, commanding life from death. You know, I was going to uh, finally pick this up. It's been blown around in the parking lot and here and there. It's been getting around. And I was going to throw it away yesterday, actually last evening. And the Lord, I, I don't know, I just felt like the Lord said, you know, use that part of the il illustration. My question is, if you looked at this, it's kind of dry. It's been blown around for days, if not a couple weeks. Do you think this could come to life? Could it come to life? Right answer. God knows. God knows. Could it come to life? Well, I'll stick you somewhere. Don't worry, I'll come back to you. It'll probably attack me at some point, but that just makes it funnier. Commanding life from death. The hand of the Lord was upon me. That's so important. We've been talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about where Jesus said, and when he comes upon you, you will be empowered by the Holy Spirit to be my witnesses in the world. He didn't say when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you'll be able to go out and convince people with your head. Because that which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the Spirit is is spirit. If you're just trying to go out and convince people with your flesh and by, by speaking words, blah, 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 not saying the word of God is blah, blah, blah. But my point is, if you're doing it in yourself and by your own effort, their spirit's not listening to you. Their fat head might be, or little head, whichever they might have. Some of us have fat heads. But the point is, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and it speaks of empowerment. It speaks of anointing. Can you imagine what it's like, and some of us have gotten to learn that, what it's like to have the hand of the Lord upon us, empowering us, clothing us with this power, when his hand is upon you, and the devil says, I'll take you out. You're just like, please, try, right? But when you're in your flesh, it's, oh, no. 
So that's one of the reasons that the devil wants you to believe that you have just dry bones that have no empowerment. He wants you to forget the empowerment of the Holy Spirit God wants you to walk in. He wants you to forget your authority. He wants you to forget what God has done for you. But he not only anoints and empowers, but it enlightens us. It, it makes us perfect fear casts out love, or perfect fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Would have been funny to really get that wrong, right? Perfect love casts out fear. When the hand of God is upon you, it's kind of like this. If God is hugging you, aren't you in a place of perfect love? He says, abide in my love, right? That means hang out in it. Hang out with me. Hang out and, and do stuff with me and think upon me and pray without ceasing. In other words, have a continual conversation with God. And, and one of the things that's so good that the enemy hates so bad is when you're having a conversation with God while you're dealing with somebody else or something else. The, the enemy hates that because he can't get your full attention and ruin you and get you to do or say what you just want to say. Because I don't know about you, but there's certain things that happen in life where my flesh wants to take care of that in a certain way. Anybody else? You ever had where somebody's gotten in your face or something and you just want to give them a therapeutic neck massage? Huh? Nobody? Well, I got a couple over here, honest people. But here's the deal. We've got to remember that we, that, that we need to prepare ahead of time. Jesus said this, go to Jerusalem, wait for the power from on high, then get out there. And the Lord also tells us this, put on the full armor of God, then get out there. Because you can't stand against the wiles of the enemy if you're in your own strength and power and under your own uh, protection and authority. You can't stand against the enemy, but boy, you can if you'll allow yourself to have the hand of God upon you to power you to do the Lord's will. One of the things we're, we're studying in our ministry training institute, one of the books we're reading is called Doing what, Do What Jesus Did. And it's such a good book, and, it, and, and that's, that's part of the curriculum, but, but it's, we are teaching people how to do what Jesus did biblically. But here it goes again. The hand of the Lord is upon me. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and, and he brought me out. Upon me, activating me, connecting me to his power, emboldens me and energizes me. Here's the thing is, is if you have... Oh, I should have brought something else or something to do this with. But the point is, have you ever tried to use a skill saw or a blender or a, or a KitchenAid or a, um, um, you know, like a big light system or something that had no power of itself and it had to be plugged in and just left the cord on the floor, the plug in, just leave it on the floor and then expected it to light up? That's like one too many hits with a coconut, right? I mean, it's a little like cuckoo, cuckoo, cuckoo. If you see somebody do that and they walk by and they pick up the cord and they go, no, I just don't want to plug it in. That would take some effort to plug it in. I'm just going to expect it to work without plugging it in. I don't want to go to the effort. I don't want to do what I need to do. I don't want to use that extension cord, which might be like, you know, prayer, <coughs> excuse me, prayer and, and repentance and, and all of that that takes me to get over to plug into God. I don't want to take that time. So I'm not going to plug in because I don't feel like it. Well, obviously we think they're nuts. We want the hand of the Lord upon us, activating, connecting us to his power, emboldening us and energizing us because in our day, good grief, the enemy's blowing on us his bad breath. You ever been talking to somebody, and I'm sorry if it was me, have you ever been talking to somebody and their breath makes it impossible to pay attention? Oh, man. When I, was, when I was in the stores, and once in a while you get a customer in, probably had a bad tooth or 10, and they're like, or, or, or just the same, 
hi. And you're like, <laughs> oh, there was, there was a couple times I'm just like, anybody got a match? I mean, I would say that, you know, behind the, you know, and they're like, what for it? I go, I want to throw it in, see if they go, boosh. No, seriously, but the enemy is trying to blow his bad breath on us all the time and trying to get us to inhale it. And what are we talking about? We're talking about his cruddy words, his garbage words. He's trying to, no offense, barf into your ears, eyes, and everything. I won't go that far because you're not enough youth in the room to, to help you all out. But the thing is, I mean, not to say you're not youthful, because Methuselah is still older than you. But, but the thing is, is that Satan is breathing on you his disgustingness, and he wants to empower you with his thoughts. He wants to, he wants to sidetrack you with his ways. He wants to tell you, be afraid, be very afraid, right? He wants to tell you that you're, you have little value, little to no value, and if you think you have value, go ask somebody that he would empower to tell you you really don't have any value. We need the Spirit of the Lord upon us and upon activating us and connecting us to the power of God to embolden us and energize us. And then I love the next thing he says, and he brought me out. Say, brought me out. You know what? When you emerge, the word emerge means to come out from where you're at and to become what you can be. The body of Christ, the church, you and I need to become what we should be. We need to become what we can be. We need to become what God has created us to do and, and what, created, what he created us for. We need to strongly follow the Lord with all our heart, soul, mind, body, and spirit. We need to be brought out. When, God, when the Lord Jesus Christ spoke to Lazarus, he said, and, he, and he, who had been dead for four days, and he, you know, I've, I was a nursing assistant. I, by the time I was 19, uh, 18, 19, um, anyways, I had already taken care of 11 people that had passed away. And, and, uh, and in fact, I remember, I'll never forget, I asked the question one day, I said, why do you guys always have me do this? They said, because you're the guy. I'm like, so because I'm the one guy on the team, I have to do, they're like, exactly. <laughs> it was funny. And I was the youngest. Anyways, but you, not to be gross, but remember, his sister says to Jesus, you know, when Jesus says, roll away the stone, Lazarus' gravestone, roll it away, and, and his sister says, but sh Lord, surely by now he stinketh. Because you know you're going to talk like this if it's going to be King James, right? Remember the old movies? They were all like in this English kind of accent because you've got to be King Jamesy in order for it to be an accurate movie. Now that's probably the wrong accent. But the point is, <laughs> she says, he stinketh by now. Please, no. Please. But I love Jesus. He just, he responds to her as he normally did. And what we're talking about today is bringing the dry bones to life. Is we need to respond not as we're asked or as we're spoken to. We need to respond like Jesus who said what needed to be said. And he said there will be a resurrection. In any ways, he gets to this to shorten it up is just this. He just says, Lazarus, come forth. Now, I don't know if he was that loud or, you know, his voice is like a tumult, way cooler, way awesomer. But he speaks in the authority of the creator. Because remember, John tells us that all things were created by him, for him, and through him. That's Jesus Christ. So he has, he uses his creative voice and power and says Lazarus come forth and he does and what did everybody do right 
If, you're, if, you, if you got any thoughts about you, you would do, do the same. You'd be like, what? Or today's vernacular, shut up. Right? I mean, they say some of the dumbest things. No offense to those who use that, but the point is, is that you're just like, whoa! But there's something Jesus says that gets missed a lot, I think, is he simply says this, take off his grave clothes. The devil wants you and I to wear grave clothes around. He wants you and I to grab hold of the death that has happened in our lives, whether self-inflicted, inflicted by the enemy, inflicted by people being used by the enemy, and many times they don't even know it, and stuff, and he wants us to put it on, and he wants us to, oh, hug it, and he wants us to make it our life, and he wants us to talk to, to say why we're dead, and why we have grave clothes, and he wants us to feel like we've been punched in the face a hundred times, and and, and, and leave it there because, oh, somebody will feel bad for me. Jesus said, take off the grave clothes. You know, I would say this. I'll bet his grave clothes stunk. But God, the Lord Jesus had recreated, if you will, had recreated whatever part of his body, of Lazarus's body that had, de, that had um, been um, eaten away. And God, the Lord Jesus, breathed into him the breath of life and brought him to life and caused him, caused his dead parts to come alive. Well, he was as dead as dead gets right? And guys, the devil's telling the church, the devil's telling the people of God, the devil's telling the world, God is dead. He's telling the world, Jesus is dead, that you can't pray and expect God to move in power for healing, but you better be afraid of the virus and everything else that creeps in the night. And then in the day, and over the TV, so much of that is the devil's media, not all of it. There's probably at least two minutes a day where Jesus gets a word in edgewise on all 500 channels, or whatever it is. The point is, is that the, the devil has tried to get us to feel shut up. But what we got to remember is, is Jesus is the one that is, in fact, I was asking the Lord, I had a different direction, and I asked the Lord, what do you want to talk about this week? And in our devotions earlier in the week, we, pre we, we read about the dry bones. And, and the Lord pricked my heart and said, that's, that's it. And I'm like, oh, cool, yes, I really like that. But Lord, what do you want to talk about on Sunday? I asked it for a couple different days, and he kept taking me back. And I'm like, okay, 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 I get it. Because you see, what he was showing me was that the enemy has convinced us we have dry bones and we can't be used anymore. And that, we have, that the church is dying and there's dry bones and it's not valid anymore. It's not usable anymore. But God is saying, oh no, I'm going to breathe life in. I'm going to bring life and I'm going to bring vitality. I'm going to bring strength. But I love this. He brought me out, removed me from where I was to where I need to be to emerge to an assignment, and he loves me for who I am, but he loves others around me who deal with me enough to empower me to be massively influential for his becoming famous in this world and theirs. Now that might be a little confusing, but the point is God wants to grab hold of you and I and use us to influence people's lives so they are lifted back up, not so that we cause them to feel like life sucks. No offense. If you hate that word, I don't care for it myself. But the problem is, is that the devil is trying to hook a hoover to your body and keep you from having any energy, keep you from having any strength, keep you from having any encouragement. He's trying to suck the life out of you. And he does it a lot through these stupid quote unquote smartphones because we're overly distracted and we don't get a minute to ourselves 
Do you know what the benefits were of not having cell phones in the past? You had a life, right? And if you really wanted to have fun, you would pick up on the, um, the party line and you'd listen in a little. And if you're somebody like I was as a kid, I think the last party line I remember was about 10 people in this little town. And I'll never forget, once in a while as a kid, somebody would say something and we'd try to answer in the voice of the other person. No, what? You know, something. And they'd be like, what? And of course, we'd just go click with the little thing. <laughs> I know you did it too. Some of you are like, oh, I can't believe you ever did that. Get over it. We did. Here's the thing. God wants to breathe life on your dead bones so you become influential for him. We love the story of Lazarus because after four days, he comes back to life. But the thing we got to remember about Lazarus is after he came back to life and everybody, everybody had been in his funeral, he was not a, they were not a family of insignificance, but a main family. And, and so like everybody was there at his funeral in that community. And here's Lazarus. He shows up to the party and goes, hey, can I, can I get some of the barbecued meat too? And they're like, right? His showing up alive was so powerful, he didn't have to speak any words. And the Sanhedrin and all those other heathens, not all of them were, but anyways, and they wanted to kill him as much as they wanted to kill Jesus. Guys, if we'll be who God wants us to be, duh, the enemy's going to want to kill us. Oh, well. Do you not know that we're in a battle, we're in a war, and, and, to, and if the enemy shoots at us, we need to be like a, like, well, I, I always equate it to football, playing football, which I enjoy doing because I love putting on the armor of a football player and running down the field, and when you run up to knock me out of the game, I get to use my gear. Yes! Boosh! I like to see people fly. Do you? I mean, it's fun. And, but the thing I don't do is when somebody hits me, even if they knock me over, or knock me out, I guess, but if, if they knock me over and they steal the ball, which I will promptly try to squeeze out of them if I possibly can. That's fun too, even in basketball. I was the tickle and tackle in basketball. Obviously, it wasn't your league stuff but it was fun. And here's the deal though. When they buffet you, when your opponent buffets you in a game, you don't stop and go, write down your name and address. Ooh, I'm telling the whole world just who you are. No, it's a game. It's a battle. It's a war, right? Don't believe in getting even. Believe in conquering. But the, again, that's the thing. When the enemy buffets you, when the enemy tells you to stay in the grave, when the enemy tells you to stay in and stay locked up, you need to just tell him to back off in Jesus' name that I'm a child of God. I'm royalty. I have the authority of God in me. You are not going to dictate my life. I'm going to do what God created me to do. Amen? You know, I said, oh, I can't believe somebody hit me. Duh, they're going to hit you. If you are half good at playing the game, you're going to get attacked. Why? Because they know take out the strong players. Why? Because they're the ones who make the game, make it so that the winning happens, right? The ones that are suck, you know, don't take this wrong, but if that's, the pew suckers are just not an issue for Satan at all because he already owns them because they won't get off their blessed assurance. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, kept him in the grave. I've kept him down. They got the grave clothes on. But I'm a Christian. Who cares? If you still got your grave clothes on, 
Tell the devil, get him off, leave me alone. In fact, if you could be like Joshua, which was a different Joshua, but he was, he was a priest of the Lord, and, and, and he's standing before the Lord. I want to say it was Ezekiel, but I don't remember. And he's standing before the Lord, and the Lord says to the angels, get his dirty clothes off. He was a high priest. He had high priestly clothes. He was standing before the Lord in the glory, glory, holy of holies. And while he's in, you know, up in heaven, and his, his entire raiment was totally dirty. And the Lord says to the angels, not to Joshua, he, said, they, he says to angels, change his clothes because I have forgiven him. And then he says to Joshua, and I, I think it was Joshua, it was a name like that. But he says to him, he says, you, if you will now do what I ask, if you will lead as I ask, if you will do, if you will come out of the grave and, and lead as I have created you and told you to do, I'll give you access to this throne room and over many, 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 or all my kingdom. He calls us out. The question is, when we're called out, who will follow? He's calling out those who will follow by the Spirit of the Lord to wherever he leads. We haven't even got past verse 1 yet. I love that. He sets us down. That's the next part. He called us out, and then he set us down in the middle of the valley. You know, there's a lot of people out hunting right now. And, um, you know, pray for Rod. He's hunting. Oh, that's right. He wanted to go hunting, but, you know, and I'll, I'll use his own words. He goes, I must have made the wrong decision. I should have been in church. Now I'm sick instead. Anyways. But the thing is, I was sitting point years ago when I was, I think I was 15, 16 years old. And, and I'm sitting point. We're elk hunting. And I shoot open sight, generally. I shoot open sight, and I'm really good for great distances. Don't know why. But I wasn't. But, you know when a spike comes out over 200 yards away and you don't have binoculars, you can't tell it's a spike. I was pretty sure it was a spike. I was all, I was 99% sure. But that 1% was making me go, there might be somebody up there going, go ahead, son. <laughs> right? Anyways, so I didn't shoot. The next people came by, he went into the trees, and a few seconds later, here come some other hunters down over the same spot. They walked into the trees where he was, and bam, bam, bam. And they're like, huge. Calling out, calling out, who will follow? by the Spirit of the Lord to where He leads and sets us down to see what He wants us to see, to grow where we're planted, to observe what we can, and do, and, he's, and the Lord is this, do what I show you. I like what, uh, what Pastor Duane, and, and he, got it, he would talk about, he got it from others, is this, and he would say, I have learned, I've been taught to do what you know to do until you've been told differently. Right? And the Lord set him down in the field. He set him down in that valley. And he says then, it was full of bones. And the thought is this, it's full of death. It's full of the dead. It's full of those who are unalive. It is full of those who are unhealable in our, our finite mindset. It is full of those who are forgotten full of those who are unuseful, full of those who are separated from the living. We're going to talk about it a little bit more, but if we don't get going, we're going to have to break out our lunch and eat. I actually have a power bar with me, and I don't know what you brought. And we do have food back there. Praise God. You know, there's a cool thing. The other day, um, our, uh, our, our, our food team went to get about a bass cart full of groceries from another outreach that was that had said hey come get some and um, the next thing ruth and team knew they ended up with a huge truck full of about a thousand dollars worth of food for free from god amen and so we have this problem where we have too many groceries and we have and i do we still have lettuce to get rid of 
We have heads of lettuce in the fridge that need to go away. If you want them, they are wrapped and they are in the fridge. Please do not leave without it. Okay, she'll, she'll be the lettuce carrier out front. So let us partake of that. Wah, wah, wah. So here's the deal. It was full of dead bones. Remember, when we see dead bones, we see death. We see something that's dead. We see it's unalive, unusable, un that is forgotten, unuseful, and separated from the living. So remember Aaron's rod was a rod that was cut from an almond tree. At least we assume that because it grew almonds. You know, I guess it could have been a poplar or whatever, but God made it into an almond tree in that it, it grew almond blossoms and grew almonds. You see, God can even take a dead stick and bring it alive. Can he not bring you alive? And you feel like a dead stick sometimes. And lately, honestly, good grief, if you listen to the media, it just, it'll suck the life out of you like, you know, like a shop vac from hell. I'm trying not to cuss here. But you know what I'm saying. The, the devil's trying to hook you to his shop vac that sucks the life out of you, and he does it through screens of different sizes in your home, some you have a keyboard, some you just hold like this, and some could be people that walk into your house and they just suck the life out of you. Now the thing is, that doesn't mean you shouldn't be friends with them at all, but you might need to limit your exposure to them. Right? I had to say that to one of my loved ones years ago um, because they were... They were honestly, they were mistakenly trying to suck the life out of me. And it was, you know, um, anyways, the point is, it was one of my distant family members. And I just said, you need to understand, because I was having to be harsh with them. And I didn't want to be, but I, you know, trying to get around it. And finally, I just said, listen, I have to, I have to limit my exposure to you. Because if I'm around you too much, I, I'm not a nice person. And I won't let that happen. And they're like, huh? Because they weren't getting the point. Stop pushing me to, and in essence, bullying me to be like you. So here it is, verse 2. We finally made it. So he caused, it's a good thing we didn't do all like 20 something verses, right? So he caused me to pass among them round about the dry bones. And behold, there are very many on the surface of the valley, and lo, they were very dry. Have you ever been out in the tundra and out, you know, some of us are hunters and hikers and things, and we're even out in, in when you're fishing or wherever you might go camping or whatever it is, and you see dry bones, but then there's the ones that are super, super dry. When we were in northeastern Oregon, it wasn't unusual to even find antlers at times that were on the ground and they'd been there so long they were very dry, and they knew you would find parts of, you know, carcasses and stuff, and they were very dry. The, what makes you think of is that it's so beyond just dead. Very, very dry. I like the word caused. He caused me to pass among them round about. What that means is that Ezekiel was leadable. He was leadable. You know, there's some people in our lives or in our, in, our, in our country and around the world who are ripe and rotting. And they're, ripe, they're, they're just dry bones to us because what they're doing, they're trying to suck the life out of us because there's no life in them. And because there's no life in them, they're jealous of the life that you might have. They're jealous of what you have and the blessings in your lives and stuff. And I don't have time to get into that. But the point is, is that they just want to keep you from being led by the Lord because you have a better life. Isn't that what the scripture says? They will look at you and go, well, why don't you want to come do all these things with us? They will despise you. But it says this, he caused me to pass among, which is for, observe firsthand what, what they were and how dry. God wanted him to see how very, 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 very dry they were. And you know what God didn't do? He didn't say, pick one up and lick it. 
Oh, you know what? I don't know where this has been. Do you? But God didn't tell him to pick up those dry bones and, oh, it was a choo-choo train. It went by. There was 40 horses and two men with apples, and there was cherries on the left side. You ever seen those movies? <laughs> but he wanted him to observe how dry they were. God wanted Ezekiel to see that these bones weren't just dead. They were deader than dead. They were so dead that they were, they, and I've seen this, where they were beginning to become like chalk or, you know, deteriorating, right? He wanted him to see what he saw. And he says to me, son of man, can these dry bones live? And I answered, oh God, you know. In other words, oh God, you're the only one who knows. God, you know. You know whether they can come alive. And I want you to think about this. God is looking at you today and saying, can your dry bones become alive? God's asking that question. And we need to say, Lord, you know. Whew. Yahweh, only you know. And again, he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. What does it mean to prophesy? It, it, is, it is naba. And prophecy is to speak with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit upon you. It is under the influence and unction of the Holy Spirit and his power. And the thing is, God told him, say to these dry bones, say to these dry bones, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Well, you're talking to dead bones. You're talking to good grief. Can they hear? So my question is, are you listening? Because if you are, then you can hear no matter how dry your bones are. And you know, why would God want us to talk about our dry bones because our dry bones can be an area of our life it can be it can be death in an area of our life it can be it can be death and destruction in in a mindset whatever it is but the point here is god says to say to them not to request them don't go up to the dry bones and say hey do you mind coming alive do you mind letting the breath of god breathe on you do you mind do you know that's how most people pray? That's how most people pray for someone to get well? It's like, oh God, if you just love this person enough, would you, if it's okay with you and you love them enough, because I know they're dirtbags, but if you love them enough, could you possibly maybe want to heal them? Do you know that's an error? It's appropriate for us to say, God, in the name of Jesus, I believe you came that they'd have life and that life more abundantly. God, I believe your word that says, if any of you are sick amongst you, call upon the elders of the church that they would, they would come and they would pray and anoint with oil and the sick person will be made well. We have command authority. Or if you understand it, express authority. We, God gives his authority through us to do what Jesus did. And according to John 14, 12, we would do greater things, not more things, greater things than Jesus did. Say to these dry bones, don't try to, don't apologize, don't do it apologetically, don't do it as an unlearned person with no experience, but be trained by God through his word and leading and use command voice, be healed. There, now you can't hear for the rest of the day. I can go louder. Hear, listen, react. The Lord says for them, tell them to hear, to listen, to react. The word of the Lord, the creator is speaking to you. Again, guys, we have that authority, but the devil wants us to believe we have no authority. And the reason he wants you to believe you have no authority is so when somebody gets sick, when somebody is, and, and you know what? There's going to be times you're going to pray and they're not going to get healed. Do you know why? That's not your job to know why. Unless the Lord reveals it to you to share with them what the hindrance to their healing is. And it may be that the hindrance to their healing is it's time for them to go home and they get to be released to be with Jesus. Don't hold me back. Right? But pray with the authority of Christ on and in you and pray as he can. Remember, 
Jesus created everything by his words. He can recreate through his words through you. Last verse of this. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, that you may come to life. The Lord Yahweh is speaking directly, and when you pray, speak directly. If you pray, again, indirectly, it, it's not likely to happen unless God just wants, is going to do it anyways. But do you know that most times God only moves because you ask? Did, why? I don't know why he did that, but it's what he's done. Do you know that people are waiting on the other side of your obedience and you grabbing up your spiritual authority to get healed and to have breakthrough for their life? Do you know that? And so if we will not be obedient, if we will not be obedient to the voice of the Lord, if we will not say, Lazarus, come forth, if God wants us to do that, then we have the authority to do that. If he doesn't tell you to do that, don't do that. That's one of the things we teach at MTI. We're going to get there in a few weeks. Is this, is how to pray for the sick based on the leading of the, of the Lord, on the leading of the Holy Spirit. It's so important because then you pray accurately. We need to rebuke the devil. And it says in the scripture, if we rebuke the devil, he will flee from you. We need to command health, life, and healing in Jesus' name as the Lord leads us. And he says, behold, I will. Yahweh says, behold, I will cause breath to enter you that you may come to life. Notice that the Lord doesn't say I might. He says I will. He is the creator. He can do that. He causes divine, omnipotent, powerful. And it, the cause is divine and omnipotent in his power. Remember, it's the breath of life. It's perfect breath, perfect life, empowered life, like in creation, but empowered by the Holy Spirit. But the devil doesn't want you to remember you have authority. He wants to keep you in a closet. He wants to keep you scared to death of all the viruses. You know, when H1N1 was going crazy a few years ago, the Lord put on my heart as I was praying and interceding for the church and, and, and the body and, and even our own lives, and I'm like, God, I, you know, I, I, what do we do? How do we teach them? And he spoke to my heart. He said, you need to remind them to have more faith for healing than faith that they're going to get sick and die. You know, we've got to bring our faith up. We've got to fan into flame our most holy faith in the spirit of the Lord. And remember this, if you get sick, pray and call for those to pray for you. And according to the word of God, call to the, the, the elders and, and that they would pray and anoint with all the sick person will be made well. I have made phone calls to people. When I've, got, I've been sick, I got sick on a Saturday. I, years and years and years ago, I got sick on a Saturday. And I was just, oh, I felt gross. And I was trying to get some sleep and I was praying, God, I need to be alive tomorrow. I'm trying to uh, try to serve you tomorrow. Lord, I need your help. And he told me who to call. So I called that person and I said, the Lord told me to call you to pray for me to get healed. And I need it right now. And they prayed and I'm kidding you not. Boy, did I feel different. But I, how I really knew I was healed was I didn't wake up until my alarm went off, which is normally I'm up way before my alarm. And I didn't wake up till my alarm was off and I was fully restored in the morning. Guys, this isn't happenstance stuff. We need to believe the Lord for healing and we need to stand in his authority because he breathes the breath of life in. It's perfect breath. It's perfect life, empowered life, like the creative breath of life he breathed into Adam. He can breathe into you today. Amen? And think about that. All he did was he fashioned Adam. You know, God was the first with claymation. He, in Plato, he fashioned Adam out of the dirt, the clay, whatever you want to call it. He fashioned Adam, and it says, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he came alive, right? Became a living being. Lazarus, after four days, was brought to life, which is impossible. 
the, the, um, the widow's son, who had been dead at least for four days because they were doing his funeral. They don't do the funeral until they know you're good and dead in the Jewish culture. Anyways, they were having his funeral and they were carrying him and Jesus didn't even ask anybody if it was okay. He just walked up to where the, what they were carrying him on and he touched and said, get up. Do you know what I love about that is? It was just because of his compassion and love. He didn't walk up to the mama and say, hey, do you believe I can do this? He didn't walk up to anybody else. In fact, of course, he didn't ask the dead man, hey, do you mind if I raise you to life? He just did it because he has the authority. So here's what the Lord wants us to enjoy. It's to live and act like the person Jesus made us to be. A faith-filled, born-again, spirit-filled, world-overcoming believer who is operating in Christ's authority. That's pretty cool. That's who God wants us to be. That's who the Lord knit us together to become. He wants us to thrive with him. Commanding life from death takes the touch of a master's hand upon us. The word of God brings life to my body and healing to my bones. When you're starting to feel sick, when you're starting to feel down, whatever it is, one of my favorite things is put on some worship music, whether it's in my headphones or it's out loud, whatever it is. When I'm feeling sick mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, whatever it is, I get into the Word of God. I get into worship, whatever. And the first thing that happens is I begin to come alive where the bones get dry. You ever have your bones get dry? You ever have in your relationship or relationships with others, let alone God, where the bones get dry? You can pray and ask God to bring life into those bones. Amen? Would you stand with me this morning? Thank you, Lord. So real quick, I'm just going to ask everybody to close your eyes and bow your head. And I want to ask this question this morning. If maybe you've been dead, maybe you're dry bone, maybe you've been dry bones, maybe it's been maybe you have before it's just been forever since you follow god maybe whatever but you're you have you're spiritually you have dry bones and you'd like the lord to bring them to life and you'd like to follow him with all your heart all the days of your life is that if that is you please everybody keep your eyes closed and head bowed if that's you today and you're asking god to bring life to your bones life to your life would you just raise your hand before the lord between you and the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I'll raise mine too because I need, I need life too. A fresh and anew. So would you repeat this prayer with me? Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. I ask you to forgive me for all the things that I did or said or thought too long on that are not in ways that you would. I ask you to forgive me of those sins. I accept that you died on the cross for my sin. And I ask you to be my leader and my savior all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. And I get to pray this prayer over you. May the Lord... Well, I do it better this way. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord set his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. 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 
May the Lord cause you to have favor where it doesn't make sense. May the Lord cause you to have food in your bowl. May the Lord cause you to have favor with man. May the Lord cause you to have success in the things that you do. May the Lord cause you to have His focus in your life. May the Lord cause you to have an insatiable desire for His Word and His presence in your life. May the Lord cause you to be strengthened in the inner man and spiritually. May the Lord cause you to be a mighty warrior and to rise up and, and to get out of the, the, the oppression that the enemy's been trying to give us. May the Lord embolden you as you throw off the grave clothes and put on the new man, put on the new person, put on the, 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 the clothes of Christ, the, the white robe of perfect love that casts out all fear. Because where we give our heart to the Lord, because we know that He loves us, because He died for us while we were yet sinners. And we get to walk perfectly. And yet, when we make mistakes, He says boldly come into His throne room to boldly find help in our time of need in the throne room of grace and mercy. So God, I pray for these, your kids, that Lord God, you love and I do too. God, I pray this. God, would you love on them this week more than ever before? And the ones who made the decision to follow you differently and better than ever before today, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that, God, that you would empower them and help them and encourage them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, God bless you guys. Thank you for being here. Love you. If you gave your heart to the Lord for the first time today or you rededicated yourself, would you please let somebody know right away? Let them know that you did that because if you did and, and you do that, it helps them to keep you accountable because you know what? We all need help to follow the Lord. Amen? And of course, you could tell me if you want to. God bless you.